Okay, Amy, it's coming to this time of year again when lambing is about to start, so preparation yeah. is in full swing. So That's maybe it, yeah. before we start, you might introduce us here to the, the flock as we go around the shed here. Okay, so all our ewes have been scanned and um, we have them separated into their different groups based on their expected litter size. So we have the singles um, here and any ewe lambs that didn't go in lamb are in there as well. There's just a handful of purebred Galways. And then we have all the twins here in the middle and I have them separated into two groups based on their due date. So these are the earlies and those are the lates and they're just being fed um, slightly different amounts. Um, so those are like a week behind these. And these are the twin ewes and the single ewe lambs in there as well. And then up in the far corner we have the triplets. Um, so they're triplet bearing ewes and twin bearing ewe lambs. Yeah, maybe just, we're in the second week of February, so these have just come in this week. Yeah, yeah, I uh, kept them out as long as possible, really just depending on how good the ground is. Um, and then we've got to a point where all the twins needed to be fed. So that would be quite a big deal if they were outside with troughs. So it's just handier at this stage for us to have them in the shed. And now that like the triplets have been getting fed for um, maybe four weeks already. Um, and the twins have just started getting fed a week or so ago. So Yeah, and maybe just following on from that, like you said, you've started feeding the triplets. So mm. what kind of, I suppose, we look at first, what kind of feeding rates? What way are you introducing the feed? Um, are you upping it as you go along, maybe? That's it, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, just in terms of, I suppose, energy requirements in the, in the run-up to lambing is um, why we would increase the feed from a, a small amount initially up until uh, the maximum amount when they're due their lambs. So the triplets, obviously they have a higher energy requirement and protein as well. Um, so they would start being fed nine weeks out from lambing and we're starting them on 0.3 of a kilo per head and they slowly build up all the way until 0.9 of a kilo per head. And then the twins, they would start being fed a couple of weeks after that, so six weeks before lambing and they are started on 0.3 of a kilo per head as well and they are built up to 0.6 um, of a kilo per head per day. And then the singles, um, they're only fed for the last two, for the two weeks um, before they're due, and they're on 0.3 of a kilo the whole time. Um, now, it, look, it does. There's a little bit of um, variation in what one farmer might do to the yeah. next, and like factors that we would be taking into account are silage quality. So we've got um, red clover yeah, this silage. This is the red clover silage here that's in front of them at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that'll be about 16% protein. So. Um, you know, they are getting a good bit of protein from that in the, in the early days. Um, and then our regular silage um, would be good, good quality, 70-75% um, DMD. So you're so aiming for good quality silage is, is, is Well, you just would adjust part of your diet, meal yes. supplementation based on the quality. So if you've not such good quality silage, if you have a lower DMD, maybe 60, then you might add 0.1 of a kilo per head or if you're going down to less than that, you might add a little bit more as well in the meal supplementation. So, yeah. yeah, and that leads on to like in an organic situation, you're looking in where you have to buy in organic feeds. Yes. So again, looking at that in an organic situation, what options or what have you were organic now since your 2015, 2015 we went in conversion. to conversion and 17 certified. So you have f five years under your belt uh, feeding yeah. at lambing time and I suppose with a lot of the people that have gone in at the moment yes. we're getting a lot of questions in relation yeah. to the diet so maybe yeah. you might talk us through what options you because you've done a lot we've of tried a few different things yes yeah the first year that we were in organic I was a little bit apprehensive I suppose about mixing our own uh, ration so we used a bought in nut it was in small bags it was lovely to use very convenient um, easy to handle and everything and no mess and no no dust or anything like that um, but that was very expensive, so we moved away from that um, the second year and we, uh, we mixed straights that year. But there was quite a lot of work in the mixing and it was, you know, dusty enough. I mm. suppose we were kind of amateurs at it as well. Um, so the year after that and it, up until now, um, we bought in a ready mixed ration just in one ton bags. We maybe buy maybe three and a half or four mm. tons. Um, for the whole of the season you know we can just top it up as, as we need to um, but that's fairly expensive this year so we've looked at alternatives and we have a supply of our own organic oats from the farm so we're going to use those and buy in organic soya and buy in organic peas and I've worked out the two different mixes so uh, like an 
oats and soya mix and an oats and pea mix and how basically how many oats do I need to add to my one ton of peas and how many oats do I need to add to my one mm. ton of soya to, to make it up and we'll end up like we can end up with about six tons um, of a mix having bought in the one ton of soya and the one ton of uh, peas and that's working out at around 800 euros cheaper than buying in six tons of ready-made ration and your six tons maybe we didn't say it at the start how many what lambings are you going to have? That's feeding how many ewes and lambs that there are going are to lamb? There are 157 ewes in the shed. Yeah. Um, and sh the, the scanning rate was a little bit low this year, 1.68 or something yeah. lambs out of that. What happens post lambing then? We're, you're feeding, we've gone so through what... So post lambing, yes. yeah. Um, once the ewes have lambed, we would be adding in some um, cow mag into the ration. Um, we would otherwise have problems with grass tetany. So um, any yoda that's lambed, she's still getting meal um, mm. and she'd have the cow mag mixed in. We keep the ewes in an individual pen probably for, well, until the navel's dry on the lamb anyway, mm -hmm. and then just on a case-by-case -case basis, but maybe f two days, mm. one or two days, depending on how busy we are and how under pressure we are. And then they move into a creche in here. So um, like f these are all due in the first week of lambing. So very quickly, this whole area will be empty. Yes. And we'll be able to use this as a creche for ewes and lambs. Yes. Um, depends a little bit on the breed then, how quickly they're moved out of the shed. Uh, if they have a decent woolly head on them, they'll go out a lot earlier than, um, like the rouge cross lambs would be very, very bald when they come out. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And they're very susceptible to bad weather conditions. So I'd keep them in um, a good bit longer, you know, maybe a week or 10 days. Right, so when, when are you starting lambing now? We're starting lambing on the 9th of March. And how long does lambing, how long is that? Is, or is it... <laughs> I'd love to say, quick, I'd love it to say four, four weeks. weeks. We yes. have managed four weeks once. Right. And it was great. Um, but we lamb you lambs as well as ewes. And um, look, we're kind of aiming for most of the ewes to lamb in March. The yes. ewe lambs wouldn't be really mature enough to be lambing down at the same time because they're our own replacements as well that we've kept. So they're all March, April born, mm, the replacements. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so that stretches things out for us a little bit and we'd probably be looking at six weeks plus for, for the lambing time, do you know? But uh, The majority is done though, in, in, you would say? Well, all the use, Yes. The use will be done pretty much in two weeks, three weeks. Do you know, like they'll be gone. So we'll go through on. the ewes very, very fast. Mm, yeah. And then, and then we'll just have the ewe lambs in. Yeah. And then, so you're talking about in approximately two weeks in before they're out. Of course, it's weather dependent, etc. But that mm. would be what the, the, the plan would be. Uh, to depending have on the breed. Like, yes. I, I, I'm all for having them out as quick, yeah. quick as possible. Yeah. But just um, last year was the first year that we had the rouge lambs. And um, like, we had to be bringing a few back in. So I'd rather have them good and strong going out. Um, for that and they would be fed when they're outdoors as well yes what so would you be how long are you feeding them then when they're when about they go? two weeks yeah um so we might have ideally we'd have them in groups based on age so you know we'd fill up one paddock first and then move to another paddock and you know it just means young lambs aren't being put in with older lambs and ewes and so you know keeping like the fields clean as well here you're, you're batching them as well yeah. as according as their lamb you're not just opening the gate and letting them all out you have work done batching them yeah to get ideally them yes. ideally yeah. and like we have temporary electric fencing as well so that makes it easier for us to do that we can partition the fields and and have them in smaller groups um and i probably do that until they've had until the lambs have had their vaccines because it means i can get in a group then you know as soon as they're three weeks old they're they're due a vaccine mm. and then four to six weeks after that they'd get their second shot um so if i keep them in groups by age it means i can bring in a, a handy number of sheep um, do all their vaccines as early as possible and get them back out. If I leave them all together in one group and they're lambing over a six or eight mm. week period, by the time the youngest lambs are three weeks old, the oldest lambs are 13, 14 yeah. weeks old. Yeah. Um, so it just makes sense from, from that point of view as well. Uh, yourself and Ross have introduced a number of herbal lays. So yeah. they're actually, that's another, I suppose, something different that you're doing as well is that they're going out, what kind of pastures are they going out to then? They're out going yeah, out to graze. Okay. So um, they'll go out onto chicory and plantain grassland mixes um, with some white clover in. Um, I know that there were 16 different species sown in our multi-species swords 
Um, but if you go out and have a look at the fields, you'll see it's mainly grasses, white clover, chicory and plantain. Mm. And the lambs do thrive on the, the chicory and the plantain. And it's bringing up key um, vitamins and minerals for them as well. It's helping um, reduce the worm burden in them or you know, helping them be resistant mm. to worms. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's, that's well suited to an organic situation. What advice would you give to somebody in relation to now in organics or thinking about converting to organics in relation to getting ready for lambing as regards okay. feeding yeah. and post lamb? What? Okay, so feeding, like f feed costs are very high. So you want to be feeding accurately. So you want to scan your ewes, definitely. Um, and that's gonna help reduce problems at lambing time as well. If, if you're feeding, um, you are used adequately, then you're going to help reduce the chances of twin lamb disease. You're going to have better quality col colostrum. You'll have less illness in your lambs. Um, and all of that means less treatments. Um, yes. So that's some, you know, you don't want to be spending money on treatments and you don't want to be having to mind withdrawals and all that kind of thing as well. Um, and then if you're looking to save as much money as possible on the feed, um, have as best quality silage as you can. Um, if you can have red clover silage, you know, that's getting protein into them, additional protein into them early on. And then, like, you know, we all know grass is the cheapest feed, so um, good quality silage, and that reduces slightly the amount of meal you'd have to supplement with. And to mix your own ration, if you can, um, mm. get some organic. Like, I mean, what we're doing here, we have tried lots of different things. So we tried the nuts, we've bought in ready mixed rations, and we've mixed our own ration. And it is the cheapest option to, to buy, say, yeah, whole oats. Yeah, what you're saying, and, you need to look at your own. You've tweaked it to what suits your system, but there's yeah. no template there. But you're saying good quality silage is definitely good quality a start. Silage, yeah. And then yeah. see what, how you supplement that. How you supplement, yeah. And to, you know, to, to, to not really be afraid of mixing your own. Like, they do fine on just oats, oats and soya. Yeah. Yeah. 